Hello and welcome to my tutorial on ultrasound imaging. So waves are reflected and transferred, transmitted at interfaces. So the boundary between two different media is called an interface and when a wave passes from one medium to another some of its energy is reflected and some of it is transmitted as shown in this diagram I'm about to draw. So imagine the top half is air and the bottom half is glass. So if we have these lines here representing the waves, so the incident wave comes in this way and the reflected wave comes out this way and a transmissive wave comes out like this. So when a wave passes from one medium to the other some of the energy is reflected and some of it is transmitted. The portion of the energy reflected or transmitted depends on the two media involved. If the media are really really different most of the energy is reflected. If they're similar the most of the energy is transmitted. For light, the proportion of the wave reflected and transmitted depends on the refractive index of the two materials. So, if you look at the uh, next tutorial where we talk about the refractive index, um, you can find out more about that. And the reflection of ultrasound waves is used in ultrasound scans. So, they use short pulses of ultrasound radiation to form images in the inside of your body. And the ultrasound is directed into your body using a transducer. And you have air between the transducer and your skin. Most of the waves are reflected because air is really, really different to skin. So gels applied to the transducer to increase the proportion of ultrasound waves that actually enter your body. And when the ultrasound wave reach, reaches an interface inside your body, so between different types of tissues, some of them are reflected. And the computer attached to the transducer calculates how far from the surface um, of of your skin, the, the interface, by telling how long it takes to the reflected waves to return. So after that calculation, it can output an image of the inside of your body using a heck of a lot of computer algorithms that you don't need to really know about. It's just nice to appreciate that that the ultrasound waves can do that without harming you. Um, you can also measure their speed using the Doppler effect and if you stand still and listen to the sound of a horn of a stationary car you'll hear the same pitch sound no matter where you stand but when it's moving and it sounds its horn the picture here will be different it's lower if the car's moving away from you and higher if it's moving towards you that's called the, do the Doppler effect so when the car is moving away from you the sound waves travel in the opposite direction from the car so it's stretched out and the longer wavelength and the lower frequency when they reach it and the opposite happens when the car is moving towards you the sound waves bunch up and they have a shorter wavelength and a higher frequency when they get to you so the sound wave change is dep dependent on how fast the car is travelling and the greater the car's speed the larger the change of these sound waves so it's used to measure the speed of moving objects and it happens with all Doppler effects it happens with all waves so, most ap big applications for radar guns and microwaves, and they could also be used to monitor the function of blood vessels and measuring how fast blood is flowing inside the vessels. <laughs> so, shorter wavelengths produce is clearer images, <laughs> and shorter wavelengths diffract much less than longer wavelengths and it means that the shorter the wavelength of the ultrasound the less waves spread out as they travel and the more precisely the location of the interface between the tissue that can be mapped so the ultrasound scanners use the wave of a high frequency and a shorter wavelength so shorter pulses produce clearer images and the pulses of ultrasound transmitted must be very very short so that ref the reflections from the nearby interfaces do, do not reach the transduce before the pulse has ended and the gap between the pulses must be long, like at least a millisecond, so that all the reflected waves from one pulse return to the transducer before the next pulse is transmitted. 
Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, thank you for watching.